Hi everybody, welcome back to ZZ. Now, in this video, I want to show you how I update my custom server files. So, I haven't done this sort of video for a while. So, if you've got modded server files, so let's say you've got boosted loot server files that you've created manually, or maybe you've gone somewhere like Daisy Boosted and created them, um, and they're 1.25 compatible, so they've got all the 1.25 stuff in them. When we get an update to 1.26, what's going to happen is we've got all these wonderful new items, all these new winter items that are going to be on Sakal and Frostline in there that we can also use on our Churners and Livonia servers. So the question is, how do you add that new stuff into your existing files? So it's something that you should do so that the people on your servers can experience these new things. Um, and so I'm going to show you how I do it. So to start off with, I basically have, if we go to my GitHub repository, for the last several years, every time there's an update, I have boosted loot, Cherneris and Livonia server files ready, and I have a survival set of files ready for Cherneris as well, which have which actually have less loot on them. So whenever there's an update, 1.26 coming up, I've got to make sure that I add the new stuff in. So what I do is this. The first thing is you've really got to own a copy of Daisy on PC. Um, and when you do, if you go into your library and go to games and tools, you can download the Daisy experimental server. You don't want to launch it or anything like that, you just want to download it. And when you download the Daisy experimental server, what this gives you access to is the Daisy 1.26 files because the experimental version has the 1.26 files in. So if we go into um, where the experimental server is, so C, program files, x86, Steam, Steam apps, common, there's Daisy server experimental. We can see down here we've got the MP missions and we've got all this sort of stuff. So they're all here. Th these are the 1.26 files. Now, at the time of recording this video, 1.26 experimental has only been out a few days. So what I tend to do is I normally don't do this practice until normally about at least a week, normally two weeks into the process because there could well be errors in these files or changes that the devs will make to the experimental files. And so I like to do this comparison fairly late on so I can catch any of those changes. But you no, know, so this is this is all available kind of to, to, to have. Also, what I'll always have is I'll have a copy of the 1.25 uh, vanilla files, so ones with no changes at all. And I'll put links to where you get these from. So in the, in um, what you can get as well is, let me, where is it? Let me find it. There it is. So Bohemian Interactive have the Daisy Central Economy GitHub repository. And I'll put a link to this, and you can click on the code and download the, this zip. And this will then give you the latest stable so the normal vanilla file so these are update 1.25 so i always download these as soon as they become available after the new release comes out and i keep them on my computer in a folder named daisy modding and there we have 125 vanilla and i've got them going back all of the way you can access old ones as well by going into this releases section and you can go back in time as well so I've kind of got these ready to go. Where were we? There we are. One, two, five, vanilla. So I click on that, and then I can go into DaisyOffline.Chonerus Plus, and there they all are there as well. So we've got these on my server. So this is the experimental files. This is the uh, 1.25 files, and the kind of the last bit when it comes to the files is having um, a copy of my one, two, five. Uh, modded files. So these are my 125, say, here we go. So 1251C. So what this is, these are my boosted loot files that are 1.25 compatible. So these are the files that I'm going to have to check to see if there's been any changes to them as far as 1.26 goes. All of the rest of the server files, when the update 1.26 happens, they'll all be vanilla 1.26. So I can let them update to whatever 1.26 is. And then as long as I then upload these ones over the top of the existing ones, my server will then be 1.26 compatible. So I take all of these and I create another folder called 1.26. In this case, 1.261C. So that basically means my boosted loot. So th these are actually the 1.25 files. And a really important thing about this is having a README. And the README is really just a shopping list of all the things that you're going to be doing with your file because it's kind of a, it's like a, it's a reminder, it's a to-do list to say, look, 
I'm going to make sure that I do this, I do this, do this, do this, do this. So what I tend to do is, if you look at this one, see it says 1.25 days E. So what I would do here is I would now change this to 1.26. And then I would change this to 1.26. Change that to August. And I'd read through it and I would add up here, latest... 1.26 items added like that so that's that's kind of the readme and what i do as well is when i finish this process and i load up these boosted loop files onto my experimental local server i go through and check things so i'll use something like um vanilla plus plus admin to go and check that you know is the sv98 vs89 sniper rifle spawning in with a scope you know our um, mag spawning in full of um, uh, full of bullets with the new stuff I'll go and have a look to see can I find the new navy jacket you know all that sort of stuff, just to check stuff's working and this is kind of how I can double check it because I've got a list of all the things that these files do so we've got the files into place and now we just need to get the tool that does this and what you want to do is you want to use the text the free text edit editor uh, notepad plus plus you want to download that and I'll put a link in the description below, in the, a description below this video. Um, and you'll also want the Notepad++ Compare plugin. That's that's really, really uh, important. And that enables us to compare two files. So then, here we go. So then we've got my um, readme open in Notepad++. So the next thing we want to do is we want to open up the... Um, modded file we want to work on so this is my 126 file so we're going to use types as an example so you work through all of the ones that will be modded but we'll open this up in notepad plus plus so this is my modded file if we scroll down you can you, you know it's modded because for example there we have um, AK 101 black um, nominal 2 minimum 1 the AK 101 black normally doesn't spawn in vanilla files so we can see it's there and then what I do is then we go into um, which way should we do it we then go into the vanilla files so the one two five vanilla files go into db and we open up the types here so edit with no purpose plus so these are the vanilla one two five and if you go down to ak 101 black you can see none of them spawn and then we'll go into the experimental ones so this is daisy server experimental so if we go into db and go into types and we ooh, and we open that so they're next to it and then we can go plugins compare compare and this will compare them and then what we have down on this on this right hand side is is these all these files compared with each other so now trust me you'll want to have yourself a nice cup of tea a nice cup of coffee or a soft drink and you're slowly going to work your way through the changes now for 126 not only has there been an awful lot of items added but there's also been quite a lot of changes in terms of where things spawn um, whether some things have been taken out of the contaminated areas and then other things have been tears have been changed and stuff like that so you're going to have to ask yourself you know what changes do i want to make so if we scroll down straight away we can see actually that if we if we look at this so in the um experimental so in 1.26 the akm has been removed from contaminated areas um, and it's just in military tier 4 areas or, it's, or it actually it's in tier 4 areas they made a mistake there because that should say weapons military tier 4 so what I could do is if I wanted to I could go and look at my types and go and look at the AKM scroll down and go okay so do I want to do that and then you would make a decision as a server owner do I want to change the spawning system from what I did have to what the new system is it could be that this one where they're taking stuff out of contaminated areas and put them into normal areas is something you want to do it may be something you won't want to do it could be the complexity of having to change all this stuff is something you think i don't fancy doing it this time mainly because there's all this other stuff that's coming in so you may, you may want to skip it you know it doesn't really matter that much so we can so if we keep scrolling down what we're looking for is on the right hand side there's these bits that are really really green um, and they're the bits where there's a big change. So as we can so this is an interesting one as well. So the ASVAL, again, this I'm not sure whether this one is a, a mistake or not. So the ASVAL, they've changed the nominal to zero. Um, and they've changed the minimum to zero as well. 
and it's not a dynamic event loop so in effect they've taken the asphalt away so it's not going to spawn anymore so i'm going to ignore that it's not something i'm going to do keep scrolling down keep scrolling down keep scrolling down um so similarly with these ammo boxes again these could be errors i'm not quite sure why they've taken away 357 ammo from spawning in on Chernus, there could be a reason for it. Is it DE loot? No, it's not DE loot. It could be, because I haven't checked it yet. It might be that they've added ammo box 357 to the um, cargo of, um, say, infected. So you've got to kill an infected to find it. It could be they've added it to an event. So it just is just there, that sort of stuff. We keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down. You know, we can choose whether to make the changes or not. We're going to get to something new soon. In fact, let's let's do that up there so we can kind of see where we are. In fact, what I'm going to do, if I grab this, see this this light this green section here. If we drag down to this green section, we're going to see something new now. Here we go. So here we have Animal Lapus Europaeus, which I think is the hare. So as you can see, it wasn't included in Daisy. 1.25 because it's just it's just not there there's the gap so we need to put this in so what, what you need to do is if there's anything in a in the game in the server um, that might spawn in if it's not in the types that can cause all sorts of problems in terms of that thing having um, its ability to hang around on the server it's persistence it could well just disappear and it might even spawn in the first place so what we need to do we need to take that so we're going to copy the whole of the entry from the type to the type then I need to jump over to my file. And what you want to do is have a look at, okay, so it's above Animal Overs Aries, which I think is the sheep, and below Gallus Gallus. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. But we're just going to keep Ovis in our head. So we're going to go back to my file, left click here and just do Control F and put in Ovis. And we're going to find that. Find next, find next. There we go. So as you can see, what we need to do now is just press Enter, make some space. Control V and we spawn that in and then you could save that now if we go back to the types we can scroll down and here we've got so this is the male and the female reindeer so we would copy that so they're above animal sus domesticus so if we look for sus dom we're going to fire that in fact we could just scroll down because we know it's just there so there's animus sus domesticus put some spaces in paste that in we've added those in and then we can so again we would save that we can go back here and we can carry on comparing now let's so there's vulpus vulpus so that's the fox you kind of get the idea um let's see if we can find right here we go so this is the first bit of new loot so we've got the assault bag winter so if we want this to spawn in our server we need to right click copy that remembering that it's above athletic shoes black isn't it so if we come over to our one and do Control F Athletic Shoes like that. There's Athletic Shoes Black. So we need to make a bit of space and spawn in. However, at this point, it's really important to understand that the nominal is zero and the minimum is zero. So this thing isn't going to spawn in. Um, but what we can do to, to give us an idea of what we could put in to spawn it in if we just look up at assault bag TSSKO, which is above here we've got an entry that works already so all we need to do is copy that bit there from inside the types go over the top of the existing assault bag there and paste that in and so assault bag winter now has a nominal of 10 a minimum of 8 it's containers it's military it's counted on the map there you go nice and easy again we could save that go back to our types and we start scrolling it down now th it, this is a long process um but trust me once you get used to doing it it's not actually that bad and although there appears to be a lot of changes you can see all this on update 1.26 most of them are little things like changing minimums and maxes to be honest, i don't bother that the fact that the balaclava three holes green has gone from seven down to five and I'm, I'm not going to change that on my server but things like balaclava three holes white is a new one that's been included of course i'm going to take that i'm going to right click that i'm going to copy that i'm going to go okay so it's near balaclava so if i look for three holes so we go back to types left click do a control f let's look for three holes uh, there we go let's close that so underneath balaclava three holes green there we go 
So we just want to carefully paste that in. And as you can see, these, in fact, have already got, so nominal is three, minimum is one. They counted in the map. They're not dynamic event loop. So they're going to spawn in nicely, so we could save that. And although it seems like a really long process, well, okay, it is a long process. It's going to take you 45 minutes, an hour to go, go through this. It is doable, and it really, working this way, directly with the code, directly with the types of the XML snippet, and once you've done this, you go on and you would do your CFG spawnable types and your events. Any file that you have edited to boost your server is, is what you look at. Um, you really get to know the code very, very well, and you get to know the class names, and you kind of get to know how things work, and when there's a problem, you tend to know, oh, I wonder if, the, if this is that, or something like that. So you work your way through, and you do the entire file, and then you save it. And then, <laughs> what you want to do is you want to make sure you go to a, an XML validator, if it's an XML file or a JSON validator, I'll put links in the description of the video, and you'll choose the file, and you'll go to where your file is, so daisy modding, uh, 1261C, on types, click open, validate, no errors are found. So, you, so at this point we can find, find any errors. So we would go through and we would do the, the whole of that for the types, we would do that for the messages, the, the globals, the events, the CFG spawn types, the CFG gameplay.json, and the CFG event spawns, in my case for my server files. Because on my server, these are the files that I edit. These are the ones that I boost. And I don't have to worry about the other ones, because they're going to be 126 vanilla. It could be on your server that you edit the... Um, the infected territories or the deer territories so you're going to have you're going to want to compare those and check those ones as well it could be that you affect um you've um you you do things like um let's say you've got custom buildings on your server it could be that you edit the map group pause uh, file as well so you've got, got to remember those changes as well so that when you upload those custom locations uh, those custom uh, object spawner files via your CFG gameplay.json, you make the appropriate changes to a 1.25 uh, CFG pause, uh, uh, map group pause file, um, so that the game knows where those custom locations are. Otherwise, the event, you know, the thing will spawn, but no, no loot will spawn with it that way. And that, my friends, is how I, how I do it. If you're watching this and thinking, my gosh, that seems really complicated. <laughs> what I've also done this time, which I haven't done before, but I have done. If we go into my repositories, and I'll put a link in the description below the video as well. I've actually gone through, and for types.xml anyway, I've pulled out all of the class names, all the new class names for 1.26, because there's so many of them. Normally what we get is when there's an update, you'll get a new gun. Or maybe you get a new hat or something like that. So there's not that many. But in this this one, there's loads of new winter stuff that's going to be exclusive in the vanilla version to spawn on Sakal, the new winter map as part of the Frostline expansion. So what I've done is, is I've, I've pulled all those class names out and I've done them as just class names. So where they haven't got any adjustments to the minimums and the... Um, uh, the nominals so that, you know, so they, they won't spawn into, you can have a look at them. But what I've also done... Is I've gone through and I've edited as far as I'm hopefully I've done it right. I've edited all of these new things to have nominal values and minimum values and category and usage names where appropriate. So, what you could do if you wanted to, you could just copy and paste these extra things up at the top or at the bottom of your types.xml, your custom types, types that you've been using for 1.25. And that would give you the new items and they would spawn in as well. And you should be fairly safe for Chernerus or Livonia. Um, I didn't get a chance to, to check the Chernerus files. Um, so I don't know if there's any other items. I'm sure people will tell me if there are in the, in the uh, comment section below here. But that might be an easier way to do it as well. So there we go, everybody. That is how I update my... Um, types.xml and my CFG spawnable types.xml and all the other ones, I do it by comparing the files and going through. And I always start with types.xml because it's the hardest one, it's the longest one. And as soon as I've got that one out of the way, I'm like, that's the big one, on to the next ones. And critically, please make sure that you validate the files after you've done them because it's very easy to make a mistake when you're copying and pasting like that. Okay, hopefully you found this video useful. If you have, hit like, comment, see me the same, press subscribe, and of course, I'll see you again soon.